Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Queen Gaming. It's something new on Twitter, the Gaming Drag. Today I'm coming at you with another Let's Play episode of Bullwhip. So, I had originally recorded an entire second episode for this, but I realized that the audio did not record. So, here I am again. But, I love y'all and I love this channel. I love the content I bring y'all. So, I'm doing it all over again. So, let's go ahead and jump right back in, shall we? Alarm chain, you are up and let's go. This is roughly where I think I stopped at. All right. <clears throat> What must, have once, what must have once been a dreary collection of sheds with corrugated iron roofs had been transformed into a lively, colorful community. Buildings sprawl across the island, some clawing themselves on top of others. Plastic garlands crisscross above streets full of bookstores, secondhand markets, and t-shirt shops. Most of the, if y'all hear any booms, it's the fireworks outside. Most of the roads are pedestrian only, paved with random patterns of mosaic tiles. That place used to be black with soot and full of metal workers. Now it's overrun by hipsters and artists. Can't throw a stone without hitting an artisan coffee shop or a drug dealer. Cinemas, galleries, concert halls, also there. If you're a man of culture or a mushroom connoisseur, it might be worth a look. But we're closing in on home now. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you... St. Benazet. The car crosses a great cantilever bridge. Kai pulls off the highway almost immediately and maneuvers to maneuvers the car onto a bustling main street. Taxis and food carts line the sidewalks. You see several barber shops and international food markets. Kai sweeps an arm over the dashboard as if presenting some grand sight. Welcome to the seat of Bullwhip Wrestling. The food here will smolder your taste buds. People yell at you in languages you don't know. And let's not forget the Founding Day Parade. Uh, what's that? It's part of a festival to commemorate the day the city officially burned its fishermen's overalls and put on a suit. Not a tailor-made one, mind you. It was definitely on sale, and the city pranced about with the price tag on the first price tag on it for the first few years. And not long after that, Regent City took the ultimate step toward becoming a metropolis by building that humongous dick-shaped town hall you saw earlier. It might not have brought respect from the neighbors, but the city did feel damn good about itself. But I digress. The festival culminates in a parade where everyone's invited and everything's allowed. It's big, colorful, and loud. In fact, nobody's a true Regentite before they've mounted a float in the Founding Day Parade. Slathered in body paint, bits and pieces covered with sequins and rhinestones. Go for it, Max Dearest. Just remember the golden rule of parade outfits. You can't be underdressed enough. Uh, almost... Almost naked? Just sequins and rhinestones? Heh, <laughs> you wish. The parade goes on for hours in the sun. You'll sweat and the glue that holds them in place will weaken. They'll peel off like glittery cherry blossoms in the wind. Soon you'll be wearing nothing at all. Uh, what? Relax, I'm joking. You're allowed to put on a thong and a few ribbons, too. The dragon smirks. He suddenly hits the brakes and mutters under his breath as the car ahead makes an abrupt turn without blinking. The car climbs a long incline before reaching a peak where the road slopes sharply downward, stretching out in front of you as a view all the way out to the sea. Right. We'll soon be at the Bullwhip Arena, but there are two districts we haven't passed by. A glance from afar will have to do. The closest one? Lionsville. Rawr. The dragon points to the seafront, the wide road running along it. Hmm. 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 What is on my face? I'm seeing it though. Okay. The center is a massive skyscraper strutting like pageants in a beauty contest. Some are sleek, sharp spires of glass and steel. Others are lit with gaudy colors and flashing adverts. One is a slowly revolving top floor shaped like a diamond. Banking, insurance, real estate, clubs, hotels, and casinos. Down there, even rabbits are carnivores. But if you're not into finance or gambling, you might still enjoy it if you're a party animal. The biggest club in town's down there. It's stacked with people on the weekends. You recommend it? Depends on what you want. It's not exactly the place for conversation, but if you want to see and be seen and dance the night away, it works. Now, if you look farther ahead, you'll see the last part of our lovely city. On the far end of town there, Willow Bluff. Kai points to an area where the high-rise skyline of Lionsville tapers off, replaced by pristine condominiums and gated communities. There are many little plazas and parks and trees have been planted along the streets. In the distance, a long stretch of beach reaches out to the sea. The ice cream booths and waffle stands along it are closed, sunbeds and storage stacked high outside of them. Despite the chill in the air, a lone surfer is riding the waves, tail lashing behind him. Several sailboats are bobbing in a lagoon sheltered by the beach. Willow Bluff. Sounds posh, huh? It is. There's a marina there. Some of the boats are goddamn floating castles. And there's the beach, of course. It gets crowded in the summer, but I recommend using it. Mostly because heavy traffic pisses the locals off. 
Speaking of traffic, there are good hiking trails starting out there too. Some lead all the way to the top of Mount Regal. Just don't go there wearing flip-flops in a bathrobe. Kai makes a turn, crossing beneath the elevated highway. Shortly after, he pulls into a parking lot. He beeps at someone idling the engine in the wrong place and quickly parks in a dedicated spot. And we're here. The original package of pain. Yeah, these adverts are so good. You step out of the car and stretch. Hear the roar of the dragon. In front of you sits Bullwhip Arena, a circular slab of glass and concrete. A wing su Let's ruffle some feathers, I'm gonna read all of them. A wing supported by columns runs along its facade. A giant bull's head is mounted above, eyes narrow, nostrils flaring, sharp horns poking at the sky, serving you striped stampede. When you turn, Kai has already hauled your bag out of the trunk. The monkey spanks you. This is it, Bullwhip Arena, our prison slash headquarters. Leave or lose. Guess you'll be exploring the rest of our wondrous town sometime later. The link to the city map has been added to the dialog box menu. Click to view at any time. Small boys land big blows. Kai checks his watch and furrows his brow. No space for tax. Jesus, that dude's enormous. And it's past lunchtime. Click now. Oh, there he is. Here comes a new challenger. Which means I have something I need to do. Go inside and ask Ringa, well, ask for Ringa Sato. He's the wrestling coach. He'll tell you what's what. Kai shrugs. So, welcome to the madhouse. Grab a straight jacket and get yourself admitted. Good luck, new guy. And have fun exploring this lovely town of ours. Wait, give me lunch too. Wait, uh, you're getting someone lunch, aren't you? Great, I'll have something too. I'm not sure what though. Surprise me? I'll owe you. Surprise you? Why, that sounds like a fun challenge. I could actually make my day better. Oh, the possibilities of a memorable meal. Why, I'm flattered by your trust in me. Too bad I don't have time for that. Later. Leaving your bag at your feet, Kai walks off in the direction of a coffee shop. Bummer. You pick up the bag and the bag and take a breath and head pick up the bag, take a breath and head inside. You enter the arena and find yourself in a lobby. There's a reception desk here and a massive polar bear leaning on it. You notice fine lines of scar tissue lacing his arm all the way up to the shoulder. As you approach the desk, he straightens up. Hi, I'm looking for Ro Coach Ringasato? Ringasato? The polar bear wriggles his nose, his bushy, bushy mustache shifting sideways along with it. That's me! And you must be Maxton Allen! He shakes your hand, looking directly in the eye. I hope you had a comfortable journey. Welcome! Honored to be here, sir. I'm honored to be here, sir. Thanks for giving me a chance. It's a chance, all right. Many a rookie has come through those doors. Some perch on top of the world of wrestling today. Some don't. We're going to set the stage so that you have everything you need to succeed. The rest is up to you. If, you tru if you're truly honored to be here, you'll put in the work required. If you relax too much, your chance will fly past before you know it. I see. I'll do my best. Good. And I'll do mine. That means the sky's the limit, in theory at least. There are some other factors involved, but we'll get the foundation right first and tackle details later. Anyway, Ringa cocks his head to the side, motioning for you to follow as he starts walking. You know this place is a tag team federation, right? Yep. But you've only wrestled solo before. Uh-huh. And you're used to relying on yourself. But here, how well you interact with your partner is just as important as your wrestling capacity. In fact, the best teams become more than the sum of their parts. They become a machinery of cogs and pistons working as one with precision, timing, and trust. Trust? Yes, trust that when one part tires, another takes over. Hmm. Trust that someone has your back when you're in trouble. Trust that win or lose, the team remains, sharing both credit and responsibility. Okay, makes sense. Wrestling for each other, sharing ups and downs. Ringa nods. Yes, and that part's vital. If you trust your partner won't hold, won't hold a mistake against you, you'll be less anxious about making one. The moment you start pointing fingers at each other, you become account accountants of blame. That's a full-time job, an exhausting one. It's a common reason why teams fail and split. So yes, we're gonna trust like you own your skill and your teamwork. You won't regret it. I'll keep that in mind. Thanks for the advice, coach. So, who am I tagging with? We haven't decided yet. We've brought you to Bullop in the middle of our season. 
The plan is for you to spend some time working out, practicing your moves, and get to know the Federation. Then you'll be fit and settled in by the start of next season. There are a few other guys here in the same situation. You'll be sparring with them until it's time to get you teamed up. Will I see those people here today? You might. Here, there's Emerson. He's a dragon, big and red. A veteran around here. Should be in the middle of his workout routine by now. There's Thorn, Zebra. I haven't seen him today, though. He should know he should be around, too. I don't remember giving him the day off. Finally, there's Bale. Snake as white as a barn door. You'll know him when you see him. The polar lifts a finger in a light bulb moment. Oh, wait, we've got Felix, too. He doubles as our janitor and has a flexible schedule. He could be anywhere, really. If you see a monkey with a smile, it's him. Uh, if you see a gorilla with a grin, watch it and don't listen to anything he says. Anyway, when the season ends, you'll know we'll know more about which guys need which guys need a partner, and if any of them are a good match for you. We'll make a decision then, and you'll have some time to sink as a team. Now, since this is your first day here, I'm gonna give you a tour of the Hey! A raspy faraway bellow distracts him, then a raccoon in an elegant black suit strides past, headed for the exit. There's another shout closer this time and the sound of brisk, heavy footsteps. The raccoon stiffens, his arm already raised to push open the door. His shoulders lift with a deep breath. He turns around, a frown on his face. Seifert! Stop, you lawyer bastard! A ram bursts from a hallway close to the reception desk. He comes to a halt in front of the raccoon, hands on buckling knees, huffing and puffing. You know his face. This is Fergus Redcliffe, Radcliffe, president of Bullwhip Wrestling. Once he was a celebrated champion. Now, he's your boss. Huh. 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 Where are you going? The raccoon gives him a strained smile. Mr. Radcliffe, I'm going away. My work here is done. What you mean, done? Fergus Radcliffe pr prods a creased piece of paper at the raccoon. You didn't sign the contract. The raccoon takes it with a sigh. He gives it a shake to straighten it out. Even from here, you can see there's a large translucent handprint on it. Fergus wipes his palms on his trousers. Ay, ay, ay. His breath is less labored now. Of course my clients didn't sign the contract. To put it in layman's terms, it stinks. The ram flinches. Stinks? Stinks? It's the best deal in the history of this federation, goddamn you! Is this some devious negotiation scheme of yours, you, yours, you lawyer sneak? The raccoon watches a bit of spittle hit the collar of his shirt and his nose twitches. Either we're not very good with math or there's been a misunderstanding. How can this be the best deal in the history of this federation when you've reduced their pay? Fergus's face crinkles up. He snatches the contract back, leaving a torn off corner of it between the lawyer's fingers. You must have gotten it wrong. See? Names are correct. Dates, yes. The terms are... different? Why? Why are these not the terms I set? The lawyer looks mildly amused. Are you asking me? This is what I got from your board of directors. The board? Yes, I sent it there for their approval. They edited it? But they wouldn't. They do as I tell them to. The lawyer shrugs. It doesn't matter. I don't need to inform you of my client's importance to this federation. They are reigning champions. And I doubt it'll come as a surprise to you that they're wanted elsewhere. In fact, this was a good opportunity to find out just how much. A deal was signed quickly. A deal? You mean, no. You devil! They're going national. Fergus's jaw sinks slowly. Wait, you signed them with Superplex? Yes. But the number of stars in that federation, there'll be nobodies there. Rich nobodies. But look at the bright side of it. I won't be here to poke holes in your budget anymore, will I? I've got to go now. Good luck with the coming season, Mr. Radcliffe. His tone says it all. You're going to need it. Alright, I'm going to pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout out to our lovely bronze tier patrons. Thank you all for I do for the uh, channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you for our silver tier patron, Cade Silver, and thank you for above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you for our gold tier patron, Tresum Guy. You're awesome. We love you. Thank you for subbing to Ultimate Tier. Anyway, if y'all want to get your names in the credits, get access to all of our not safe for more contents as little as $5 already. I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye.